Good morning, traders, and welcome to the Bookmap Advanced Education live trading webinar. Uh, this is today. It's a live analysis. Uh, this is Bruce at Bookmap, so I do the live analysis on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday at 10 a.m. We go for about an hour, uh, and then on uh, Wednesdays we have live trading, Stocks Trader, uh, J Trader, uh, 10 a.m., and uh, on Scott Scott Polsini on uh, Thursday, a, a futures trader. Okay, so this is par all a part of the bookmap education that is free and open to all, uh, and um, uh, pretty pretty nice offering that you get here. Uh, you get the educational course uh, and then uh, these live advanced webinars as well. It's all part of the Global Plus subscription. All right, let's go through some disclosures and then we'll dive in here to the uh, the live market. We just saw an, a, a in the previous webinar, pretty nice move. Uh, I'll go through it in just a minute here. Uh, anyway, uh, general disclosure, all bookmap limited materials, information, and presentations are for educational purposes only and should not be considered specific investment advice nor recommendations. The risk disclosure, trading futures, equities, and digital currencies involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. All right. We're going to uh, jump right in uh, and uh, see where our price is going. Uh, this is where we left off. A little volatility in here. We just left off on the uh, previous webinar. Guys, we were talking about this, and this was a pretty easy um, uh, move, I thought. Okay. Uh, we were talking about it down here. Okay. Just above this figure at 4,200. Okay. It, it's in the previous webinar. Uh, here's why. Okay, let me go over this here. Uh, I, I thought this was a, a, a very easy scenario to, to see. Okay, this is worth 20 points in the S&P, right? We're looking for 42.20. These guys have been up here forever, right? I, I don't know. Uh, uh, good morning, Doug. Good morning, Alan. Uh, Doug, uh, or anyone else that has a, a book map open for, for a while, I know we saw them uh, yesterday all day, okay? Maybe the previous uh, few days as well, maybe all week. They've been up here at 42.20. Okay, they're gonna get filled. They want to get filled. They're they're not pulling their liquidity. We're still they still haven't gotten filled, but we're looking for it, right? So anyway, um, uh, the scenario was very simple. Okay, uh, that we're gonna break down below, and this is just typical S and P or it's just typical market behavior. Uh, look at this uh, uh, volatility here, right around non-farm. Okay. It immediately went to the downside. The numbers were, were, were pretty bad, pretty negative. Uh, and then it immediately went up to the upside. Okay, look, see this area around this black kind of like um, a, a dark zone around it? That's other traders pulling their liquidity out of the market. They do not want to trade. Uh, they do not want to put liquidity into the market because they don't know what the numbers are. When there's less liquidity, that's when you can get volatility. Okay. This illustrates that point beautifully right here. Okay. Now, typically, where, do, where does price go? It typically goes to typically goes to areas where they do stay in the book. Okay. Now, they they kind of added and pulled up here a little bit. That we didn't get up into this area here. Uh, usually, you'll see they'll stay in the book and get filled, like in this area here, or they'll stay in the book down here and and, and get filled in that area down there, uh, and just bounces around right right between areas where they are staying and providing liquidity, all right? Um, now, the scenario here uh, was a longer term, higher time frame outlook for this move into 42.20, okay? And there we go, we're, we're just about there uh, and uh, looking for it. There we go, no, just shy of it. Okay, anyway, it's inevitable. Um, the uh, all right, this is what we're looking at here, right? Uh, and look at the shenanigans, like uh, uh, a lot of buying in here, okay? Looking for it to go high. I was looking for it to go higher in these areas here, right? Uh, and uh, it, it it didn't, right? You see, in fact, more sellers come down. They test the bottom of this range right here. They go through stop run here. In fact, God, do I have, I think I have my MBO from that time. Yeah, um, you see the stop run here. Uh, and uh, you, you um, uh, uh, right below the swing here, okay? Every, get everyone stopped out, get everyone 
going the wrong way, sellers coming in thinking, wow, okay, it's, it's, it's going, it, you know, going with the numbers. Uh, and then the like, there's two different scenarios we went through and that we were looking for. One is, and the primary scenario was buyers above this 4,200, right where it broke down from here. Okay. We get our buyers here. We're looking for it to come up into the swing here. Okay. Uh, the swing up here from non-farm. Okay. And then, uh, and then the breakout into 4220, which it's still kind of fighting here. It still hasn't quite got there yet. Um, but uh, looking for it. Uh, and uh, anyway, that was the primary scenario. Secondary scenario on this was, uh, was pretty straightforward as well. Uh, we'd get up back up into this 4200, see a lack of buying, not pushing through. Okay. Uh, and then we come back down maybe around the, this, um, uh, around 97 to see more sellers, then we'd be looking for the lower lows at, at down into 4190 or 85, et cetera. Wow, beautiful. Look at that move into 4220, huge transaction, just huge. Uh, let's just zoom in here. I wanna, I wanna see what's going on here, okay? These guys got what they wanted, all right? And we even covered it in the previous webinar, uh, we we're looking for a little bit higher, a little bit through that area, trap some of these buyers here um, into um, uh, 42, uh, 22 and a half, and then also 25 up here, okay? So we'll see, we'll see. Um, now, we'll go through the other opposite scenario here, okay? What if we get down below 42.20 and we start to see sellers, okay? A lot of sellers. Well then, this breakout is not is not sustained, uh, and we're looking for sellers to drive it back into the previous uh, uh, value areas. Okay, the likely one would be here around 15, just to begin with. Okay, and then point of control around here. You know, just looking at high volume nodes, looking at where value was established previously. Okay, these are those areas. Okay, and we can look at the clusters of volume. We can look at the um, uh, uh, where price went sideways and, and, and created value, okay, uh, before before um, moving to other areas. And that's what's going on here, all right? So uh, we'll look for that scenario and be open to that as well. Okay, another one up here, these guys up at here at 4230, uh, they're providing liquidity up there as well. Okay, you can, you can see them, you know, faint, a little bit fainter actions here. Uh, they, they, were, they were up here earlier, but uh, uh, they're up here, um, with more liquidity now, right? So uh, uh, see a nice little 10 point move up into uh, 42.30. Uh, and let's, let's just take a look at what's going on here, okay? Now this larger player came in, we saw this um, uh, previously, and I, you know, I hate to, uh, to say that to you guys, um, that's what happened. Here, here's where he came in, right at 10 o'clock, right? Uh, you can see this larger player coming in. Right, and now they're what the, what this is what they're doing here is they're they're um, well, I mean they're establishing um, uh, or you know kind of um, uh, skewing the auction a bit here. Uh, but uh, here we are in, into 25 guys, right? So uh, another ni nice transaction. But what we're looking for is not so much this liquidity in here. Uh, we're looking for where the skew stays in the book. Okay, like in here at 25, they stayed in the book and they got filled. Okay, this larger player, okay, staying uh, how many points away? Um, just a few, few points away, two and a half points or so uh, away from the market, uh, and or or three points maybe. Um, and you know they're they're uh, providing liquidity on both sides here, okay, and they're pulling and and adding uh, on the other side. Okay, so uh, they're staying in the book, right? They're they're uh, it's a likely. Uh, um, a uh, stacker algo queuing, uh, staying in the order book, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, moving along uh, straddling price uh, on the bid and the offer. Anyway, uh, it was a little disruptive here at 10 because um, all of a sudden that uh, we, we didn't quite know who might be taking control. Once we started to get back up here though and started to understand where price was going, um, yeah, looking for that 4220. Um, Let's get to some questions here. Um, is there a dial for audio? Uh, yeah, there should be. 
Um, uh, can you not hear me, uh, Gio? If, uh, I mean, you should be able to bump up your, your audio. Uh, you know, it, it is, it's based on your own system, not, not in, uh, uh, or maybe there is audio settings in, uh, yeah, I think there is audio settings in uh, GoToWebinar. Anyway, you'll have to play around with that. Uh, let's see, Alan, um, if there's no orders during non-farm, then who is trading? Well, they're still trading, okay? It, it's just that um, there are a lot less orders Okay, we can go in and take a look at that, uh, Alan. It's not like, you know, everybody pulled. Sometimes that's that's the case. On very thin markets in stocks, you can see that. Okay, uh, and uh, yeah, it's fascinating. All right here, we'll we'll just, let's just zoom into this area here. Okay, so here's our non-farm. All right, and we can look pre precisely uh, at these areas here. Okay, here. Well, let's look. Let's look. Actually, uh, yeah, this is this is great. I, I just love this kind of stuff. See how thin this is? There's still there's still orders in here, okay? But not many, right? Not many. Uh, one, three, a uh, nine. You know, nine is high liquidity <laughs> at this moment here. This is three or four seconds after non-farm, okay? Uh, so there's still some liquidity in here. You, you can see it, and you can see it in the heat map as well, very faintly. Uh, but you know. Look at 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 uh, 09 and then at 10. This is for in this small view here. That's high liquidity. Okay, and where did we go? Right to it. Right. Price can very easily just blaze up to those areas. Okay, and transact. Where did it go down here? High liquidity on on the on the bid. All right. So uh, it's a it's a beautiful lesson in how these markets um, uh, behave. You know how how markets work in general. Uh, understanding that liquidity is such an important piece of the puzzle. Uh, and uh, most traders uh, have a hard time understanding liquidity. Um, that At least um, uh, a lot of the uh, retail traders, uh, and the reason being is that uh, we, we've never really had access to it before like this, okay, to really understand. We can understand the concepts, but we've never seen it visualized, okay? And that's the, the key here, uh, because now, now we can understand the story and visualize it. So, uh, for example, uh, Alan's question, I mean, there's your answer, right? Okay. And, and you can really understand that. I mean, look look how different the liquidity is. It's like a totally different instrument right now. 150 or 165, 190, 291, whereas before it was 1, 1, 3, and 9, right? So uh, completely different, right? So uh, anyway, and, and look at the volatility in here now. Right, it 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 has to chug through uh, uh, th these areas in here. Okay, now the S and P is kind of a nice market because you'll find the buyers come in here and and take on that liquidity. It's just it's an amazing market. Like it, it's very high liquidity, and yet you can see a lot of traders come in here as well. Okay, so uh, guys, we were looking for that ten point move up into into uh, forty two thirty here. Uh, let's see if we can get it. Okay. I don't know. It it looks okay. I mean, they're they're starting to um, starting to see some volume in here, but I I don't see it in the order book yet uh, down in this area here. So uh, we we want to see that kind of uh, um, you know higher uh, uh, probability trade of of looking at uh, a few different pieces. Okay, like there's some volume up here. It's not bad, okay? but it, it's not as easy as some of these other uh, moves that we were talking about earlier. All right. See, there, there's liquidity here on, on the offer. Okay, uh, front running is at uh, this uh, 28 and a, and a quarter here. Now, see 29. Right. So, you know, we're still kind of getting some back and forth in here. Okay. Now, when the book was skewed, now see the reaction to that liquidity, and we found buyers. Okay. So now we have the potential here. Let's see if we get our buyers here and our move up into into 30. Okay. On this on this rotation right here, looking for it. Okay, it was due to the reaction to the liquidity here on the bid. Okay. All right, now let's see them bid up a little bit more and let's see if we get more buyers and try to trade up into this uh, 30 area here. Okay, so again, understanding context between, and what I mean by context here is the reaction to uh, liquidity, the, uh, uh, you know, the on the bid and on the offer. Okay, and, and what, the aggressors, the traders here with market buy and sell orders, 
uh, think about that, okay? Uh, what's the reaction? What if they show high liquidity in here and, and the market sells right down into it? Well, it shows that there's a lot of a selling pressure and they, they want that liquidity. They, they want to trade down into that area here, okay? All right, yeah, we can see this was a, this was short-lived as well. Um, uh, a nice little bump here in liquidity and reaction to it, uh, but um, it, it, yeah, short-lived. Still, just looking for you know something a little bit better here uh, for that uh, that move and and stream up into 30 here. Okay, here's a little bit more liquidity. Okay, a little bit more buying. I like it. I you know I, at least we can get back up into maybe 29 here uh, based on that. Okay, so uh, anyway, that would be the minimal move here. Uh, now, minimal moves, let's just talk about this because, uh, you know, just, just looking for, you know, it to go a bit higher here and that's it, okay? Uh, just based off of this here, okay? Now, when we have something that uh, looks a lot better than that, okay, uh, this is starting to look a little bit better here. So I'm looking for this move to, to 29, uh, I think we can see them pulling on the offer on this time frame. Okay, I think we can make it up here to 30. Okay, so let's see. Boy, I'd still, I'd still like to see this bid be stronger here. I'd, I'd still like to see it stronger. Uh, you know, it looks kind of good. We find that we, we're finding buyers here. Okay, so and they're pulling up here. See the guy at 29 pulling. Yeah, but uh, yeah, still, still. Now, if we see them, you know, add on the offer here, and we find some sellers, we're going to drop down into likely down into like 25 or so. All right, some other questions. Um, so, Alan, that answers your question, right? Is it usually just algorithms? Well, no, it's all sorts of traders. That are pulling their liquidity, okay, at, at that during that non-farm. What's the best indicator for up versus down action, uh, Thomas? Uh, that would be um, being able to read the context of the uh, uh, the price action, okay, and the price structure uh, with the volume within that price structure. Okay, like right now, okay, we're looking for buyers. Look at the bid, see the bid, okay? They're bidding up, we're finding buyers. I'm looking for buyers to lift it up into 30 now, okay? That's the best way. Okay, it's a context between the auction in the order book uh, as well as the, um, the, the volume within that price structure and where the target is because that's where the sellers are up here at the liquidity, okay? That's the best way. Is it programmable? You can give it a shot. Knock yourself out with uh, our, our API. We have uh, Java and JavaScript based. You can, you can do all of that, okay? Um, Yep, still looking for 30 here. Uh, bid still looks pretty good here. Anyway, let's get to some more questions. Um, Can you show absorption tool? Yeah, I, I, yeah that sounds great, uh, Sven. I, I love that tool and I, I you know, I, I rarely go over it anymore is because we've got, we've got a lot of tools now <laughs> and, and uh, uh, the stops and icebergs is, um, uh, gives us such, uh, you know, such insight um, that, uh, uh, you know, I've kind of, um, uh, kind of shied away from the um, uh, uh, absorption indicator. I, I, I've always liked it though. I've always thought it, it shows uh, some very unique stuff. Um, all right, so let me let me get to that in just a moment. Uh, and um, let's see. Uh, thank you, John. Um, oh, that's great, John. So yeah, you, you've uh, hopefully you you caught it early on. 
uh, from, uh, I mean, like I said, I, 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 re I was waiting for this. this we know, we know these moves. I mean, my God, uh, we've seen it so many times, right? Here at, at, you know, this kind of breakdown and then break back out and looking for buyers here to lift it up into at least some of these areas up here to begin with. But overall, it was really, this, this would have been in, this is longer term, you know, higher time frame liquidity uh, that gave us a lot of insight, okay? This has been in here for a long time. I, I, I don't know if anyone else um, has uh, uh, that information, okay, of uh, how long this was in here, but they did not get filled and they're so patient. They wanna get filled, right? Looking for it, you know, and this was the perfect opportunity for it to trade up into 20, okay, perfect. You got all these guys going short, the data is short, uh, or the data is bad for non-farm. Everything's looking good here. This is enough to just have a beautiful stop run, um, in you know, up into up into uh, 20. Uh, guys, all right, let's just zoom in here. We were looking for 30. It just transacted, uh, and um, uh, Thomas uh, put that algo together uh, and uh, uh, you know put it on the marketplace. So uh, look for those imbalances, and uh, uh, that'd be a great great uh, tool for you to have. All right. Um, okay, you saw it at the close yesterday. Yeah, John, I saw it earlier than that. I, I saw it last week. Um, I mean, last week, um, uh, yesterday. Yesterday, maybe even earlier. Um, I can't recall, uh, and I I don't have access to that uh, um, that higher time frame liquidity. Okay. Um, anyway, uh, great stuff, uh, and um, a beautiful move. Even even this move into here. We're looking for, you know, e even back in these areas here, it was like, well, they'll probably get to 20, but there's also like to see it, would love to see it go through 20 up into 22 and a half and 25, and then potentially maybe 30 as well because there's there's high liquidity up there. Uh, now, we got a lot of people going long, okay? Now we're looking to see if, and you know, a lot of these guys have gotten filled here, These this longer term high liquidity in here. Okay, so looking for sellers to start to come in now, right? They're starting to, okay? And we're gonna go through the same process uh, that we're just covering with Thomas, okay? And we're gonna look at the the, re, the um, uh, price structure, volume, and liquidity, all right? Okay, so price structure, let's mark it up. It's right here, okay? In fact, there's a couple of them. Uh, there's a small one here and then a smaller one here. Uh, and we're already below it here, right? So you can already see it below this area here, okay? So, uh, and uh, we're testing the lows here now. Uh, so we're looking to see if we can get more sellers in here right now, okay? Uh, or, uh, it, yeah, looking for these sellers to try to drop it back down to, likely back right down to 25. Um, or, uh, we'll see if we get maybe a retest back up to where it just broke from here at 28 and three quarters, 29, something like that. Okay. Now we're getting sellers here. They're going to drop it. So looking for about 25 ish area here. Uh, and again, now this is starting to be, I mean, we're still kind of bullish here. Basically the structure on the smaller time frame, the structure is breaking, no doubt. Okay. So we're looking, we're looking for on the smaller time frame for it to go lower. Okay, but down into here, that, that's why we're looking for just the move back down into around this 25-ish area here. And then that's it, that's it, all right? We'll assess at that time, okay? Because this is kind of counter trend. Um, but uh, it, anyway, we'd be looking for uh, uh, that, that move down into here. Uh, and then uh, we'll see if uh, we find some buyers and try to lift it right back up into maybe uh, 28, 29. Uh, area here. Okay. Can I review other edge indicators? Um, yeah, we'll we'll go over the uh, uh, absorption indicator here, Thomas, on uh, just a second. And then the stops and icebergs. Sure, I can I can review those um, as with. You. I mean, we always go through these. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, let's see, John, uh, you were long. Oh, that's that's beautiful, John. Love love to hear it. Um, yeah, I mean, this was again like a, you know, 
much much higher time frame okay look uh in, into uh where price might go okay and it was really based upon these guys up here that have been in the book for several i think several days at least a few days um and then now um i'm i'm really curious to see if we start to see some sellers come in now okay now the s p has broken to all-time highs and uh you know this is this is a pretty nice breakout too uh above uh 20. so i mean 10 points and on some pretty nice volume too okay but uh all right so let's uh let's see where do we leave off here we're looking for our sellers uh back down to this 25 area here all right okay we have icebergs look at the iceberg transactions up here as well okay Uh, Sven, um, we're working on getting more data uh, within uh, uh, Bookmap, but when you open it up, um, you start collecting the data because we're talking about you know full depth of market here. It's not just you know the the last transaction, right? So when you look at like your candlestick charts, like it, it's pretty easy to digest <laughs> your your machine to digest or or display uh, that information because it's only one price level each price level here we're, we're talking about all of this and okay? this is all you know it, it's hundreds of price levels just for one one moment right so it, it really um uh it can be uh it, you know if you start to look at like months of data or weeks or days of data within bookmap it starts to get kind of heavy okay? but uh, uh you you can get up to 24 hours of uh, backfill data from DXV data. Now it's backfill data, it's kind of parsed, it's lighter, okay? It's not MBO for sure, all right? Okay, uh, and Sven, you wanted to look at that uh, absorption indicator. So let's turn that on and boy, we haven't looked at this in a long time. Yeah, here it is. I, I love this indicator. Um, all right, so we'll turn that on. Uh, and then I'll, I want to show you guys, and I want to cover this again because I know there's going to be some questions, so I want to go through it with you guys with the um, stops and iceberg on chart indicator. Okay. Okay, guys, here's our move into 25. This is what we're looking for. Okay. Uh, based on based on what we covered up here. Okay. Order flow. Right. Uh, and um, uh, and and look at the the insight here. Not much, right? We're not getting too much information here, uh, to be honest. Okay, I and mean, we were looking for that move, right, into this area here. Uh, but look at the. There's some nice selling in here. Okay, a little bit of selling in here, a little bit of buying. So it's really we're, there's not a lot of clarity there. Okay, but it did go. It did follow through. It did hit 25, and at this point we would reassess. Okay, so um, and. Yeah, a little bit of buying coming in. All right, well, you know, they're gonna try to drive it maybe back up to where it dropped from here at 27. It's almost there. Um, it's just one point away. Um, but uh, and maybe they can get back up into 28 uh, up here as well. Uh, but, I, you know, we're not really seeing anything too clear here uh, at the moment, All right? In fact, from this area here, just before 1025 East, Eastern time, uh, sellers, Sellers dropped it. They took control here. Okay, only on this small time frame, though. All right. So for them to be upended, we need to come back up to here and trade it. That's why we were looking for a retest to just test this area to see if we find buyers up here. Okay. And that's why we're looking at this smaller time frame here, just to test up to 27. Right. And there it is. Okay. Just just because this is where sellers came in. Right. Now what if we get buyers here okay just at 27 like you know big green dots here and the bid starts to light up here uh, and they start to pull on the offer well then we'd be looking for the move up into where it dropped from up here at 28 all right okay again three things we're looking for structure volume within the structure and auction within the structure okay on the bid on the offer etc
um, let's see. Um, Uh, let's see, Tom, boy, okay, this is going to be kind of hard to keep up with, with everybody here. Um, uh, your last question. Um, well, at 42.20, um, were they buyers or sellers? Well, it, it's both. I mean, it's, it's always both. Uh, but... Um, you know, we're looking at that high liquidity transacting, okay? and it did. Okay, uh, and um, uh, how how to read after that? Okay, well, it's, it's about the context again. Okay, are there more buyers? Okay, so so for example, now because we get this question all the time, right? Now this this webinar is is open to 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 everybody, um, so um, that's why we're getting kind of um, uh, you know some of these these questions that uh, uh, you know we, we've uh, we've answered for for years here. Uh, you know there's newer traders in here, uh, and they want to understand what what it means by context here. And this is it right here. Okay, high liquidity. We were looking for that to get filled, and then it filled it. I mean, you can see. In fact, my God, this is tremendous. Um, there was 4,500 contracts that tra transacted up here. 4,500, okay? Now, we, I've got the, the little pink square here is an absorption indicator, okay? Look at the look at the icebergs as well, okay? How many here from negative uh, 3,166 down to, oh my God. So there's like 3,000, uh, you know, or more uh, icebergs within this area as well, okay? This is a really important area. Right now, the context here is: Did we find buyers above it? Yes. So, to understand what these areas mean here, this is high liquidity. We know that. Okay. In fact, it was how many contracts? Nine hundred and eighty-four, right here. Okay. Now, just because that there's high liquidity here, it's it's the context between the aggressors, the market buy orders. Okay there might be more market buy orders than there are limit sell orders. And that was the case here. There's more buyers, and look at the big green dots, more buyers above this area here. So there's still more buying pressure. So we're looking for this to continue. Any beautiful little pullback right to it. And where are the sellers here? Hey, okay, look at the red dots here. This is again context. Okay, there's not much selling interest here. Okay, we rotate back up. We found more buyers here. Okay, this is an easy read for a move up into the next level of liquidity here at 42.22. We even trade through that on more buying. Here's our pullback. They flipped actually from offer to bid. Now they're buying here with limit buy orders. Okay, now up here, we're not finding so many buyers, right? Okay, in fact, we find some sellers here. Okay, so again, context. Now, this is a small example, okay, but understanding that if we find more sellers below this area, I'd be looking for it to trade back down into this area here, or maybe where this transaction took place, where there's also liquidity here. They, they want to buy down here. Okay. Now, did we get there? No. You know, not yet at least. Still not finding the buyers up here we want to lift it up into 25. Not yet. Okay. Now we're now we're starting to find a little more action. Okay. All right, here we go. Looking for it, right? And a little bit of volatility. Still looking for it. Now we know it transacted, but it, it took it took its time. It, you know there was some some action back and forth in here. But what is important to note here uh, is understanding that what this represents up here the, these these orders here these limit sell orders. It's larger players uh, and. Um, uh, or just it's high liquidity on the offer, okay? 
a lot of sellers uh, up here with their limit sell orders. It doesn't mean price is gonna bounce off of that and go a million points the other way, okay? It's about the context of the buyers and sellers here. Okay. Now we have an absorption indicator here. Um, and Sven, uh, this is an, an, a, a nice one here. Uh, I mean, it's huge absorption. Now we can we already know that there's going to be absorption here. We already know that because there's already high liquidity here, right? We, you, this is where you can see it in a heat map, and it, we know it's being absorbed. Okay, but um, where you get more insight here is when you don't see high liquidity and you still see it being absorbed. Okay, so this is these are so. It it answers a question here. How can the how can price absorb um, this price level here at 42.20 absorb more uh, aggressive buyers uh, without it going through? Okay, because how how many orders are here? 115. All right, and then how many? Let's, let's just zoom in here. This is really important. Uh, to understand um, 74 here on the bid right here or on the offer on the offer okay here's a transaction or the, look at the transactions going through here and where's that we're looking for a big one there's a big one okay 79 here but look at the transactions here right let's just zoom in here and we'll look at it precisely how many transactions okay 334 well, how's that possible? It's an iceberg, right? It, you can verify it here as well. Okay, look at the drop here. Okay, pretty pretty nice one here. Okay, it dropped from. Uh, it, I'll turn the on chart indicator on in just a minute here. From 51.20 down to uh, uh, 53.35. So you know over 200, over 200 icebergs here. Okay, there's only there was only like you know whatever it was in the book here. Okay, 100, 111, okay? Price didn't go through that area because someone else is on the other side with an absorption, absorbing this with um, uh, their iceberg, okay? And, and we can verify it here with our iceberg detector, okay? So there's a, a really nice confluence here between the, the absorption indicator and icebergs. All right, so anyway, I, I, this is basic uh, stuff, guys. I mean, we've gone through it a million times. Uh, let's go back to uh, current price and see what's going on. Okay, yeah, not not getting too much. We did we get our move to to 28? Yeah, we did. Okay, it it did come up and test 28. See see how sellers remain in control from this point. Okay, so uh, uh, we came back up to where the the heavy 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 selling. It's not really that heavy selling, but it is for this small time frame. Okay, so we come up here and did we find the aggressive buyers up here, Thomas? Okay, not really. Okay, a little bit of buying, a little bit of buying, you know, not much, not much, right? In fact, see how sellers come in on the other side here? There's more selling here than there is buying up here. So they're pulling it away again, okay? All right, again, context, all right? It's all here in the order flow. Um, the, um, Uh, the absorption indicator. Let's go back up into this 30 level. I want to. I want to check this out. Um, and uh, yeah, I know this is a little bit of hindsight, uh, guys. There's not a whole lot going on in the market. We we already seen the the bigger moves here. Um, but again, look at this context here. In fact, we've got a beautiful context here. Stops people getting stopped out to the upside. Icebergs on the other side absorbing. We have our absorption indicator. We have high liquidity here at 30 as well, and we we knew that. Now this is what I want to cover about the absorption indicator. Look, look how uh, nicely this is uh, identifying the iceberg. Okay, now these are native CME icebergs. Okay, there's two different types of icebergs. Okay, there's uh, synthetic uh, icebergs that are, are not uh, native to the CME. Okay, so for example, let's say you're using uh, uh, TT uh, Trader Technologies. Uh, that they offer iceberg orders, okay? They offer co-location as well. Uh, and um, uh, you're using their order type, okay? It's not native to the CME. It's not gonna show up in your stops and iceberg indicator here from Bookmap, okay? Now, this one is likely here, uh, uh, a, um, a, a synthetic iceberg, 
okay, because we don't see the drop here, right? Uh, but we see it in here. We know that. That's that's no, no question. I mean, that's a a, a a native iceberg there. And we see it also with the absorption indicator, right? Now the absorption indicator. Let's just. I want to go through it here. Um, I have it set here for within one second. I'm looking for at least 600 or greater to transact at the same price level. All right, that's what I'm looking for. That's the condition here. All right now, I know if there's 600 uh, and and they're trading um, within that small time frame here, there's got to be someone else on the other side taking that trade. Okay, it could be an iceberg. It could be just high liquidity. We've seen both examples here. Right, and that's that's how you can read this. Okay, uh, set it. You know, play around with the settings to to find something that works for you. But this is, you know, these are pretty important areas here, and we, this can be confirmed with uh, stops and icebergs as well. Okay, uh, Sven, do you have any other questions here? Um, that that indicator will work on all markets, uh, Sven. Okay, which is great. I, I really like that indicator. Um, uh, the um, uh, you know it's 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 based on the aggressor. It, it, we we say it's absorption indicator, but it's it's based on the aggressor. You know we're looking for a certain amount of aggressive trades to take place, and then at the same price level though. So we know there's someone on the other side that has to be absorbing that aggressive um, uh, behavior. Okay. Yeah, check it out, uh, Sven. Um, this is actually not a bad setting for today uh, with 600. Uh, and um, uh, it, it's nicely kind of uh, uh, documenting these little areas here of high liquidity uh, as well, okay, or the transactions into that high liquidity. Okay, now we know we don't need the absorption indicator for that. We know there's high liquidity there. We see it in the heat map. Okay, but like I said, where you get this context between stops and icebergs and synthetic icebergs, it's really nice, really nice. I, I really like it. Um, anyway, um, yeah, Thomas, so the, the heat map here um, is high liquidity. The heat map is showing you high liquidity on the offer, okay, up here. Uh, the color of the heat map is red, orange, very high liquidity, then yellow, white, blue, and then black. Okay, on the bid is the same color, but it's below price, so we know it's on the bid, all right? Uh, Sven, I'm, I'm going to um, point you to um, some videos I think you'll find very helpful uh, on our YouTube page uh, to answer a lot of questions for you. Uh, is uh, here under Features and Components. Okay, there's a, a new um, a basics video here. Uh, I would recommend you watch this. Okay, it's about four minutes long. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, there are um, a, a whole bunch of videos in this. Uh, playlist here. In fact, right click on it, uh, open it up in a new tab here, and you'll see the entire playlist here. Uh, this will answer a lot of your questions. Okay. There's one on the heat map in here. Okay. Just scroll through here uh, and, and you'll see. Okay. Um, we can do a quick control F and then heat map. Okay. Here it is heat map and settings. Okay. It's three and a half minutes long. Okay, volume dots, if we do a little quick little search here for volume dots, volume dots here, uh, video number 16 or cumulative volume delta, et cetera. All right, uh, this will answer th those those uh, those questions for you. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Frozen Tundra, uh, I know you're new in here. What is your, what's your name? Um, and uh, uh you know well welcome to the uh, to the webinars here um for stocks how does bookmap know uh who is the aggressor well it, it the aggressor is it's just a market buy order right now on the other side of the trade is the limit right someone has to take that trade right and uh that's uh that's just how the market works uh let's see here um Since neither side was advertised on the on the book, well, um, there might be um, a, a hidden order in there. Um, hidden, I mean, the the tip of the iceberg still has to be in the book, right? So if let's say there's an iceberg for a hundred, 
but let's say it's a, the first a tranche of it is 10. 10 will show in the order book. Okay, we just don't know that right behind that there's another 90. Okay, that that we don't know. It, it could be another like thousand behind it. We don't we don't know. Um. So that that's the whole thing about uh, you know, having a hidden order. We you, they're hidden from the order book. They don't want to show it, but they have to show a part of it, a piece of it. Uh, let's see. So, well, all right. Uh, yeah, I would recommend um, the, uh, I mean, we can go through the binary elements here, um, uh, but uh, I, I would recommend uh, Frozen Tundra that, that uh, you go to the educational course and watch part one and part two, okay, especially part one to understand like, you know, what, what moves the market, okay? Uh, it's all about liquidity and order flow. Okay, or transactions. Okay, and we can come in here and we can go through an example, and and maybe the S and P is not the best for an example, but um, I, you just see it all over the place. Look, sellers drop it here. Where are the buyers in here? Look at sellers again here and here and here at the low. I'm looking for them to drop it again, but where? Into high liquidity on the bid. Okay, and we're already there. Okay, so now and they're pulling here. Okay. So we might get, let's see, we might get some more sellers here, okay, and they might drop it into 41 or 42.21, all right, okay, because, uh, but we may get some, what if we get buyers back up here, okay, maybe around 23, okay, we get some buyers here, then I'd be looking for them to to move it back up to about 23 and three quarters. Okay. So anyway, uh, now, you know, I'm going to take this, I guess I'll go through it here. Um, when will Bookmap be available for uh, TOS users? It, it already is, uh, Shin Shin. Okay. You reach out to Thinkorswim. Yeah, I, I know that they were beta testing it, et cetera. Um, I know that there's users. Okay, it's it's uh, not a fully functioning uh, like like desktop version or feature rich uh, like the desktop version here. All right, let's see these buyers try to lift it to 24 here. Okay, just a you know quick quick move up there. And that's it though. So anyway, I'm going to I want to go through this here like uh uh even on the most binary level, right? There's our move to 24. Nothing traded yet. I'm still looking for our transactions at 24. Um but um uh just understanding these and this is our education, our bookmap education. Okay? Understanding these binary elements here of what makes the market move and we're going to extrapolate that to much higher time frames. It is the same stuff, okay? There's our, again, to 24, not, not one contract had traded up there. It exhausted out here and here. This is exhaustion, okay? We did not find buyers up here, okay? Here's another rotation back up and it exhausted out again. Probably find some sellers here, okay? And they're probably gonna now try to trade it back down to about here, 22 and three quarters. See how we found sellers here? Okay. We tried. The buyers tried once, twice, thrice. Uh, they did not make it to 24. We're going to find sellers drive it back down. Now, there it is, right? Now, why? How? You know, well, because there was no market up here. Okay. Where was the market? Let's just go through volume profile, understanding auction market theory. The most traded level is, is uh, well, right around here. Okay, around uh, um, well, when we were looking at this smaller range here, okay, the most traded level is right, right here, right here at 23 and a quarter. Okay, no market up here. We're going to find sellers, drive it back down, and and then trade back down to these lower areas. Okay, and we did, we found them. Right. What about buyers here? 
didn't find them. More sellers, we're looking for the move, okay? So uh, anyway, it's uh, taking that understanding here, and, and this is, again, part of our education. Take that understanding, and let's zoom out. Okay, how is that any different than this area here? Okay, let me mark it up. See this whole area here? Okay, it's just a bigger range. All right, let's zoom into that range. Hold on. Okay, all right, let's zoom into that range. Okay, where's the most traded level? Where's value for this range here? It's right here. Okay, the most traded level. Okay, all this back and forth and back and forth. It's this area right here. Horizontal line right here, around 07, 07 and a half, something like that. Come on now. Okay, let's try that again. Oh, I got to get out of Zoom. Okay, got it. All right, so here, right? So we buyers tried in here, tried to get higher. You know, uh, they, they couldn't. Okay, we found, look, we find more sellers down here. Okay, just like that smaller range that we're looking at. Sellers down here, more sellers down here, not a whole bunch of buyers up here. All right, looking for sellers to try to drive it down lower. Okay, beautiful move. Now, we just marked up point of control. Okay, look at the beautiful move back up to it. Okay, now, again, if we see more buying back up into this area, well, just above point of control, in fact, it bounced off of it here and then went higher. Okay, we're looking for a move to the other side of the range. We get more buyers up here, okay, where we didn't find them, you know, back in these areas here. We get more up here. We're looking for them to break the range and create a new value area. And that's what they did. Okay. So from that micro uh, uh, structural level and understanding price movement to macro levels, it is the same thing. Okay. So Thomas, I, I would um, highly um, encourage you to, um, uh, I don't know if you're a, um, a member or a client or not, um, but uh, access our educational course and go through that, okay? I think it would be a really good review for you um, and uh, understand the uh, uh, some of the basics here, okay? And then you can apply that. Come to these webinars. That's, what, that's why we have these webinars, is to review this, okay? And go through these details in here. All right, so you can apply what you've learned in the live market. You can ask questions. Okay, and then we also have live trading by Scott uh, Pulsini and, uh, and JTrader. You're new. Okay, great. Well, welcome. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, come to these webinars. Uh, and uh, yeah, go over the weekend, go through that course, that course content. Okay, I think you'll find it really helpful, especially part one and part two. Okay, part one is about we go through what moves the market, basic market mechanics. Okay? And then part two is is about um, uh, understanding that in a bigger structure. Okay, And we just kind of did a, a quick review of it. Okay, and that's, a, uh, I guess, answers uh, Frozen uh, Tundra's uh, question as well. Okay. Okay, same, same, same ideas, okay, to understand. Now, just one thing that it, it's, I didn't um, say and it, I need, need to uh, define this, the aggressor here, let's just take the heat map off for a moment, okay? And just look at the aggressor, right? Which is the market buy and sell orders. So now when you click on market buy, you're, you're gonna get filled up here, right? And you, you crossed the spread, okay? And you're getting filled up here. Okay. Now, when you when you set a limit uh, buy, you know you're setting it at the price you want to get filled. Okay, when you hit market buy, you're getting filled on the best offer at that time. Now, liquidity is great in this this market, so there's very 
very few times is there a spread, okay? But this gets back to Alan's questions about during non-farm, when there was volatility during non-farm payroll, okay? And you're gonna see huge spreads, okay? In fact, let's, we'll just go back and, and take a quick look at it. So market, the market buy orders, the, the, the point I'm trying to make here to get to is this is actually what technically moves the market. It moves price, okay? Because uh, you're, you're taking liquidity uh, from the market. You're not uh, adding liquidity, okay? You're taking it. Uh, and uh, when you take liquidity from it, you're, you know, you're taking uh, who wants to offer at that price level. Right now, if there's enough takers and they take all of that liquidity at that price level, it will move to the next price level. And that's how the market moves, okay? Now, up in some of these areas about absorption, well, what if there's high liquidity up here? Let's turn the heat map back on. High liquidity in some of these levels up here and we can't trade through it, right? If they just stay there and they continue to absorb. Well, technically those, those uh, uh, limit orders, they cannot move the market technically. Now they can definitely, I think they can, I mean, they definitely influence it, but technically they cannot, but they can stop the market from going higher or lower, okay? They, they can do that, okay? Because they can continue to absorb and absorb and absorb, right? All right, so uh, anyway, is again, got context between those two players to understand where price might be going next, all right? It's all, that's um, uh, important uh, to understand and it's a part of book map um, uh, basic uh, market mechanics, part one of the education, all right? Okay, uh, Sven, is it possible to pay for one-on-one -on -one consultation? No, I'm sorry, Sven. Um, the, um, uh, come to these webinars though. Uh, this, is, this is the place to come. Uh, we have uh, partner educators, uh, like for example, uh, uh, twice a week we have, um, I'm sorry, uh, well, yeah, twice a week we have um, uh, two different uh, traders. So we have um, on Wednesdays, J Trader, on Thursdays, um, Scott Pulsini, they're educators, okay? Uh, we don't want to uh, uh, offer, um, you know, consultation like that. Uh, we don't want, we want as many partner educators as we can in here. Uh, and uh, uh, it's, it's fantastic when we get uh, uh, other uh, professionals using Bookmap. Um, and why? It, it's because they have their specific way of trading. Okay? And, and here, Bookmap um, is a platform. Okay? We're, we're, we're not a, a trading strategy. Okay? Specific educators can have a specific way of trading. Okay, just watch Scott and, and J Trader. Okay, they they trade very differently. Uh, and um, uh, you know, and in, in here we're going to go through the basics, and so you guys understand order flow. Okay, now wrapping a trading strategy around that, we'll go over it. Okay, but we're we're not here to do that. Okay, we're here for you guys to understand order flow. Uh, and then, for example, your strategy. Well, here's one right here unfolding. Right, you're looking for you know, are you a buyer here? You, you know, we see more buyers at this higher level here. Okay, I, you know, I, I wouldn't, um, but it's possible if we get back up here at 27 and see more buyers, yeah. You know, I think it would look pretty good for coming back up maybe to 28 and 30. Okay, but see how we exhaust it out here, right? So let's go through another scenario. What if we see sellers down below here? Okay, we exhaust it out, we find sellers down here. Yeah, then I'm looking forward to come back down to 22 and a half. All right. Okay, now we're getting our buyers up here. See, it had it had to it, it rotates. You know, I mean, at this time we we were not very bullish here. Okay, but it's looking better now. Okay, now we're looking to see if that that the bid starts to light up here, and we see a little bit more buying up here, and we can get our move back up into 28, uh, etc. All right, so uh, anyway, wrapping a trading strategy around this, okay, is um, uh, we go over that in part three of the educational course, okay, which I think you guys will find helpful. Um, uh, but, uh, uh, you know, going through the different scenarios, 
um, here we go, you know, looking at these sellers, if they can get back down through this area here, let's see them pulling here on the bid. Let's see if they add more here on the offer. Okay, then we'd be looking for this move back down into, uh, let's see, I, I called it down here earlier around 22, um, maybe, maybe maybe around 23, 23 and a quarter, okay, because that's where the buying really picked up here, right in here, okay. So anyway, um, uh, and then, you know, it, a million ways to trade it, right? You know, uh, you could you could look for a pullback. You could uh, uh, just jump in aggressively. You can put a buy stop or a sell stop in here. Let the sellers take you into the market. Put your stop up above here, right here, and then looking for the follow through, okay? Like this looks pretty good, right? You're exhausted here. We're finding sellers here. Okay, so looking for sellers to try to trade through. Remember, this is the kind of critical area. We need to see them trade through it here. Okay, but looking pretty good here. This is a false breakout of this little swing right here. All right. Okay, let's see here. Um, okay. Uh, so I misunderstood your previous question. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. Sometimes it's it's hard to read all these things um, and get it all straight. Uh, oh yeah, you do have the, like, uh, your midpoints um, in in stocks. That is true. You can get you can get filled at midpoint. Uh, we do not have the ability to look at um, icebergs in stocks. Uh, the, probably the best way would be to use, we have an old, uh, the older um, uh, strength indicator that will work in stocks uh, and also that absorption indicator, okay, that you can start to put, put some pieces together um, about uh, understanding it. Now, see, see guys, we, we, this setup was still here, okay? The setup was still here. Buyers, okay, you know, looking for a false breakdown here, right? Now that that's been kind of, you know, upended a little bit here, um, and it didn't it didn't play out, but it had the potential and it looked pretty good. Um, exhaustion, sellers, looking for lower, right? It can't hold this market, but remember we did say we needed we needed to see it get through this area here because this this is where the buy transactions took place. And it still may, it still may, okay? But anyway, uh, you know, we said stop up here and uh, you might get stopped out on this one, okay? This is not high probability, okay? This is not as clear as some of the other ones. It was just a, a, an, an example, okay? In fact, actually, it looks like we're gonna get kind of a flag pattern here. And all a flag pattern is, is strong movement, consolidation, strong movement again, okay? I don't, care about a flag pattern. I, I want to understand what's going on in the order flow. It's the order flow that defines those patterns. Okay. In this case, strong movement, it needs to take a break. Now we got some selling in here, but we're still actually bullish because we're still ab above this area here. Okay. In this little area here. Okay. So uh, actually it, it still is still showing bullishness and it is still exhausting out up here on the buy side though. Right, so we don't really have much clarity in this little move here, right? Okay, what do we need for uh, you know this pattern to go through? Strong, look at the strong buying. We have no question about it. Okay, well, where's that strong buying now? If we get it, we should get the move back up into 28 and 30. Okay, right now it's exhausting out. We're not really finding buyers up there. Now we still may, it's just rotating back and forth. Okay, so, you know, you know, I, I, it's just, it's not giving you as much clarity. Oh, thanks, John. <laughs> uh, can I show Tesla? Sure, we'll, we'll jump over and take a look at Tesla, uh, Arnaldo, 
Arnaldo. Oh, Aaron, okay. You're welcome, uh, Aaron. Um, so yeah, you got a long question here. Um, market order hits the... Well, the, we're, we'll always always record the aggressor, okay? Um, and um, yeah, as a, uh, was it a market buy or market sell? Yeah, I, under, I understand your question. Um, yeah, at midpoints, you know, to know what, what kind of aggressor it is. It's kind of the similar question to like a dark pool transactions. Um, we don't really know, uh, you know, like they're kind of, you know, those are over the counter. Um, and, you know, who was the aggressor or what's going on there? We, it, it's kind of, um, it's difficult to, to ascertain that. I don't know if that's the best answer. I, that's the best answer I can give you on that one. Okay, you want to look at Clove, uh, John? All right. All right, yeah. All right, guys. Well, see, see, look at the selling here now. Okay, uh, it's still not the greatest, but it's looking better for a breakdown here. Okay, looking for it. You know, looking for this offer to to show more here on the offer, and looking for them to pull on the bid. And I, then I'd be looking for the move down in to about this twenty three and a quarter. Okay. Right. So now we just we're looking for those sellers here. Okay. We're we're seeing a fight here right now between buyers and sellers, but still I think sellers got it here. Um and uh, so we would be looking at this is value area and we'd be looking at a new value area down here on a smaller time frame. So anyway, we'll, we'll we'll watch this and see how this this plays out here. Okay, it's looking like a kind of a false false breakdown at the moment, to be honest. See see how like here's our here's our sellers. Now they're going to get upended if we get buyers here. Okay, if we get if we get buyers here, then I'm looking for a very quick a very quick move up into this 27, 27 and a quarter. Okay, it's kind of a like I said, this is not. Um, something high probability, okay? Yeah, see, these guys that sold down to the bottom of the range are really gonna, they're gonna feel it. They're gonna have to cover up here. All right, let's get to, uh, let's add Clove in here and then also um, we'll take a look at Tesla. Uh, guys, for those of you who showed up for the uh, stocks webinar uh, yesterday, I'm, my apologies. Um, I had to cancel that last minute, uh, and um, uh, the I did not send out the email to everybody. Um, that was my mistake here. Up, oh, run into a heat, create a heat dump here, heap dump. Um, so uh, yeah, my apologies on that. Like um, you know, we hold that webinar like once every three weeks to to four weeks, something around there, uh, and um, I I. I I had to cancel at the last minute. So if you guys showed up to that, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, yeah, sorry, Arnaldo. Um, my my bad on that. It, it Yeah, I was just, uh, I, I had to, I had to cancel it. I had something else that was, it was really a big fire to put out. All right, we'll just, we'll leave it at that. Um, oh, right, Doug. Yeah, I'll update the um, uh, webinars. Um, yeah, yeah. So you get you can access Scotts, etc. Wow, interesting stuff here. Right, right before the 9:30 open. Look at this guy, 
guys here in the high liquidity in here, like just uh, layering in, layering in here, and they're getting filled all the way down. Interesting stuff. That's pre-market. That's why it doesn't look like high liquidity here, but it was for pre-market. It was certainly high liquidity. Okay, now once you can see once 930 opens up, look at the high liquidity coming in. This is typical of stocks. Okay, pretty bullish here um, into high liquidity here. Uh, now that was uh, resistance, as you can see at the swing here. Now it's support. Uh, they, they flip. Um, we still find more buyers, and we're still finding more buyers. Okay, so still looking for this to go higher uh, up into 685 or so. Okay. Uh, interesting though to also note this here. See, even in this area here, uh, uh, let's just zoom in a little bit more. They were starting to um, add in a little bit lower, kind of front running here. We found the buyers and we traded through it. Uh, but they're doing the same here as well. See, see them here at before 85 here at 84 in 83 and, and a half or whatever it might be here. See how they're, they're adding liquidity here? So they're front running here. And this is kind of a bearish slant to it. Um, the liquidity only, right? So it's it's not as easy a read um, of, um, you know, it blazing right up into these areas here. They, they did the same here uh, as well, but we still, this is again, I, um, I'll get back to Thomas's question. Uh, liquidity here, but there was more, look at the buying pressure, like the aggressors, the green dots. There's a lot more of that than there is of liquidity here in the book. So they just trade through it, right? And what was resistance is now support, right? Here they are on the bid. They want to buy now. They wanted to sell here. Now they want to buy. This is, again, what we're talking about in terms of value areas and creating new ones, okay? So we have an area here, okay? We can even go all the way down here. But... Um, uh, this is actually looks like the best to me. Uh, and then it broke out and created a new one here. It broke out and created a new one here. Okay. Usually these areas typically break out on high volume and establish a new range. Okay. And we're looking for that. Okay. We're looking for that. Uh, and we're looking for when buyers might come in and do that. Okay. Just like we went through for that micro example. And then we looked at the higher time frame. It is the same thing. All right. Okay, so anyway, that's Tesla. Let's take a quick look at Clove. Uh, John, I don't have a lot of data in here, but yeah, nice breakout here. Okay, retesting to where it broke out from. Uh, and uh, still finding some sellers here. Okay. So we need to see them kind of exhaust out and find some buyers in here. I, I don't have a lot of data in here, so just an hour, right? And uh, it's not it's not it's not enough to to give too much insight here. Okay, but we can we can definitely mark this up. You know, this is a whole new area here, right? And here's our breakdown. Is it going to establish a new area down way down here, or is it going to kind of uh, be a false breakdown and then come back up into this area, okay, up into previous area. Now, if it does, where, where are we looking at for it to go? Okay, point of control, right? So there's there's kind of two very close to being points of control here. Okay, it's really kind of this zone here, right? So uh, uh, if if we find buyers come back in above 870 here, that's where I'd be looking for them to try to take it, all right? Okay, right now, yeah, it's, it's still still breaking down. Oh, you want to, okay, you want to widen out this way, higher time frame. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know much about this stock. It, this is uh, um, one, one of the marijuana stocks, right? Is that right? Oh, healthcare. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't know how much of a high flyer it is, uh, but anyway, you can see the high liquidity in here, down at eight, and then up at ten. 
Okay, by 10 being by far the most, 57,000 shares up there. I'd love to see like this be a false breakdown here. I'd love to see buyers come right back in. I mean, they're supporting it. This is again, that context, you know, they're supporting it here. Look at the buyers are here. That's that's uh, 18,000 shares. Okay. Now, question is, do we find sellers interested in it? No, not right now. All right, so again, what if we get buyers up here? Well, then I'd be looking for them to try to lift it up into previous areas of, of value. Okay, same, same stuff. All right, guys, look, uh, we, we reviewed a lot of things in here, uh, and I never even got to show you uh, one of our newest tools in here, which is just fantastic. Um, here's our <laughs> here, here's what happened with the uh, S&P. Uh, look at the buying cluster up here, right? See what I mean? Like, you know, in the context of this structure here, we, we saw all this back and forth, and we noted we, we just didn't really, you know, quite think that... Uh, uh, it was offering much of an edge. Okay, but look at how much better this is here. See, see how see how much cleaner that is to read and understand that the, there's buyer buyers in here that that want to lift it back up into the previous high. All right, so instead of this breaking down into this little area here, we saw it break out. Okay, and it's establishing new range up here. All right, all right, guys. Uh, anyway, I, it's a pity. Like I, I, we, we covered the um, absorption indicator, which we haven't done in a long time, and you know it's a great indicator. Um, the on chart indicator, I, I don't want to uh, to show it here at the moment. Um, it's just uh, let's just wrap it up here. Um, uh, I will show you this. Um, how about this? This might be better. Uh, we did a, a webinar here. Uh, on um, uh, futures IO for the on chart uh, stops and icebergs uh, indicator here. And we went through it in detail here, right? And all the settings and everything is in here as well. So you might want to check this out. Uh, and uh, it's under selected webinars on our YouTube page. Uh, and it goes through the stop iceberg on chart uh, indicator, which is, it's great. You can see the whole evolution of the iceberg order. Okay, even for current current market. Um, as it's unfolding. All right. All right, guys, uh, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, and uh, thanks for coming. We'll call it a week and we'll see you next week. Okay. Thank you.